I am going to read you a story called Wallace's List. It is by Barbara Bar Botner and Gerald Kruglick, illustrated by Olaf Landstrom. From the cover of the book, do you think this is going to be a narrative or an expository writing piece? Do you think it's going to be fiction or not fiction? What do you base your theory on? Let's read to find out. Wallace, a mouse, could do almost anything, anything that is, as long as he had a list. He kept a list of all the clothes in his closet. That way he could get dressed in the dark and everything would match. Wallace had lists of pets he would like, stories he loved, and exciting weather, such as thunderstorms, hailstorms, and blizzards. When Wallace woke up, he wrote a to-do list. This morning it read, water plants take a walk. Wallace watered his plants, then he rang for the elevator. Hello, my name is Albert, announced Wallace's new neighbor. Wallace would have liked to have said hello. My name is Wallace, but saying hello was not on his list. Wallace wondered what Albert was like. The next to-do list, Wallace wrote, read, say hello to Albert, laundry. So Wallace introduced himself to his new neighbor. Would you like to listen to some music? Asked Albert. I have to do my laundry, Wallace explained. Laundry is laundry, Albert said Albert, but music is life. Wallace thought of Albert as he watched his clothes tumble around in the washing machine. When Albert called out, I'm off to paint some ducks, Wallace wished painting was on his list. Later that afternoon, Wallace saw Albert's painting in the hallway. Something had gone wrong. Wallace knocked on the door. Where are the ducks? I changed my mind, Albert boasted. Wallace was dumbfounded. Changing my mind is an adventure, Albert explained. I don't like adventures, said Wallace. An adventure can be anything, anything that isn't planned for. You mean anything that isn't on a list? Exactly, said Albert. Do you ever use a map? Wallace continued. I have lots of maps. I don't need maps, said Albert, because wherever I go, there I am. But what if you get lost? Being lost is automatically an adventure, cried Albert. Suppose you get lost and then fall down and hurt yourself. I pick myself up and keep going, replied Albert. When I get in an accident, it makes me feel better to write a list, said Wallace. Wallace showed Albert list number three. Accidents that happened to me. Bumped my nose while vacuuming. Scraped my knee, same day as bumped my nose. Stubbed my toe. Excellent, said Albert. Perhaps you would like to join me sometime. If I ever did go somewhere, said Wallace, it would be to a place from list number seven. Number seven, places with funny names. Katmandu, Molly, Timbuktu, Walla Walla, Glockamora. Glockamora? How about tomorrow? cried Albert. To be fair, explained Wallace, there is one more list you should know about. Number eight, things I hate. Rain streaming down my glasses, sand in my shoes, being hot, being cold, being wet, and especially being lost. Hmm. It is quite possible that at least one of these things might happen if you went to Glockamora, Albert admitted. Wallace agreed to think about it anyway. That night, the idea 
of an adventure made Wallace so nervous he couldn't sleep. When he finally dozed off, it was dawn. Wallace awoke to the sound of rain plinking on his window. He thought that on such a dreary day, he might like to share some nice onion soup with Albert. He looked at his recipe. Onion soup, three onions, two cups of water, dab of butter, pinch of flour, dash of salt. Wallace only had two onions. Perhaps Albert had one to spare. On his friend's door, he saw a note. I knocked, but you didn't answer. Maybe you didn't want to have an adventure after all. I'm off to Glockamora. On my plane, the rapid, the rapid rode it. Wallace watched the sky grow darker and heard the rumbling get louder. A major storm was heading their way. Torrents of water fell from the sky. Wallace had to warn Albert about the dangerous storm. Wallace had to make his way to the airport before his friend took off. He folded his, nap, his map and, and waited for the bus. Before he knew it, he was drenched. His glasses streamed with water. His map was soggy. If this was an adventure, he sincerely hoped he'd never have one again. At the airport, the arrivals and departures board was the biggest list Wallace had ever seen. It was changing right in front of his eyes. He would have enjoyed just standing there and watching it flicker. But first, he had to find Albert. He raced from terminal to terminal. He got caught on a baggage belt and tumbled around with the suitcases. In terminal three, he was chased by a cat. Wallace rushed outside and a bus splashed water on him. Wallace, Wallace decided to go back inside and climb up to the observation deck where he could see almost everything. No planes were taking off or landing, so perhaps his friend was safe. Then he noticed a sad looking fellow. Wallace was thrilled that his friend was safe. He told Albert how his map got soggy, how he didn't have his rain goggles, and how he bumped around in the luggage belt and chased it by a cat. Wallace, you had a real adventure, Albert exclaimed, but he didn't say much more. Since his own adventure on the rapid rodent had been canceled. Wallace remembered a list he read in the newspaper. How to cheer up your pals. Listen to them buy them chocolate, tickle their whiskers. But Albert was not heartened by these remedies. Wallace had one more idea. He took Albert to the baggage claim. They held onto each other and rode around the conveyor belt until they were dizzy. They hopped onto a fancy piece of luggage that was loaded onto a trolley and led outside, where it was then heaved into a huge limousine. They watched the city lights whiz by. When the limousine stopped at a giant building on Park Avenue, Wallace whispered, let's go inside. Wallace and Albert rode up the elevator to the 30th floor, stepped onto the balcony and gazed down on the whole city. We are almost as high as my plane, said Albert.
Albert. I can see just as far, and it's not bumpy. Thank you, Wallace. I wish I had a streaming bowl of onion soup, said Albert, when they arrived home. Wallace was just about to tell Albert he needed three onions to make proper soup when he decided instead to just chop up the two onions he had, he had and put them in water. Then he sprinkled in some sugar, even though he wasn't in the, it wasn't in the recipe. As the soup simmered, Albert found Wallace's list number 11. Funny words, rhinoceros, hippopotamus, kayak. How about Cincinnati, Albert suggested. My Aunt Hattie lives in Cincinnati, said Wallace. Do you really have an Aunt Hattie? Of course, laughed Wallace, telling jokes had never been on any of Wallace's lists. Onion soup with only two onions was delicious. When Albert went home, Wallace made a new list. My adventure, number 13. Going to the airport in the rain, getting lost, being chased by a cat, rolling around on the conveyor belt, riding in a limousine, being on Park Avenue a balcony, making onion soup with only two onions, telling a joke. It was a long list, the longest list Wallace had ever written, but it was not nearly as good as list number 14. My best friend, Albert. That was his favorite list ever. So, is this book a fiction or nonfiction? Is it a narrative or an expository writing?